Almighty God, who gave to all your apostles the word, the gospel of the kingdom, <clears throat> give them power to preach it to the nations. May we receive their message in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, we, uh, as is our custom, uh, verse 2 of hymn 8. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of wet garden, sprung in completeness, where his feet pass. Well, we turn to something I've been looking at a long time. I want to review is Canon Watson Dixon's history of the Church of England. It was registered in the Princeton Theological Seminary in 1932. His the title of it is History of the Church of England from the Abolition of Roman Jurisdiction, Roman Watson, M.A. Um, Vicar of Wakeworth, Honorary Canon of Carlisle. And this is volume three on Edward VI from 1549 to 1543. As memory serves, he gets a little bit cranky at times. Uh, we'll just see upon a review. I could be wrong. Jury wants to hear the evidence. Uh, published in 1893. Seems to me he had some, he had some tractated influences. As memory serves, he's out of a Wesleyan background. So I don't know if we're getting a Tractarian, Tractarianized history or an Anglo-Catholic history. It's just not clear yet. Um, we did find also another front, the narratives of the Reformation by the Camden Society, which was a pleasant discovery. I looked for it in hard copy because I like hard copies. But anyways, contents of the third volume, 1549, First Act of Uniformity was not the beginning of uniformity, but was the measure of most serious import. Opposition of the prelates, make it a little bit bigger here. Give me a second, there we go. An examination of the act, page three, contained nothing against lay recusants, showed that parliament was willing to restore ecclesiastical jurisdiction as far as it suited their own convenience. The phrase, King's ecclesiastical law is now fully sanctioned. <clears throat> the convocations of clergy had nothing to do with the act for uniformity nor any subsequent act. Nor with the first prayer book. Examination of evidence on this act about marriage of priests, act about tithes, commons, requests of restoration of Latimer to his see. Latimer's zeal against Lee, Lord Seymour of Sudley, that will be an interesting case of the latter, Cranmer signed the warrant for his execution. Latimer's sermons before the king, his invectives against Seymour, he defended a tainter of treason, he lashed the vices of the age, his anecdotes about his hearers, first prayer book. Windsor Commission seems to have had no written commission to compose it. This is going to be a good read. Comparison to the first prayer book or use of the Church of England with the Sarum use, the best known of the old diocesan usages. That'll be interesting. As to daily prayers, they showed the communicative spirit of the Reformation. The order of morning prayers chiefly followed matins and prime of the old hours of the breviary and even song chiefly followed the comply, the collects, the press tone of many parts of the book. The orders of holy communion, the press tone. <laughs> I'm glad we use our own prayer book, 1662 and um what have you got? Are you almost done? Yeah, I'm almost done. Because I wanted to read this with you. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, you want to do it on here? Uh, let me ask mom. Okay, yeah, it's cool. The new communion, very different from the old missile. The differences exhibited, the preparation was omitted. The ordinary of the mass was refrigerated. What's that mean? Place of the sermon. The canon of the mass considerably altered. Significance of the alterations. The doctrine of the presence was maintained, but differently exhibited. The canon of the mass no longer seek to be said secretly. The baptismal office. No? We have to do it not on YouTube. Okay, so what do you want to do? Read, you read it to me? Uh, yeah, after you're done. Just come get me. Okay. Confirmation treated as an independent rite, place of the catechism, the other offices, matrimony, visitation of the sick, publication of the book, which was made the occasion of abolishing of some of the still remaining ceremonies, a visitation of the kingdom on the occasion, in that visitation, the heretics, Cranmer not act inactive against them. You're 40 pages into the book and we're getting all this stuff. Cases of Michael Thalm and Joan Botcher, Bok Boker, discontent of the country. Great risings, partly caused by distress, partly by religion, the rising in the West. I hope he's going to mention something about Vermigli and Booser. Outbreak of the revolt in Devon visions of the council which concealed their real strength, state of affairs, foreign mercenaries hired in great number, weakness and arrogance of Somerset. Paget or Paget, Paget remonstrates with him activity of Russell, Herbert, and Gray of Wilton, mission of the Carews to the west, the barns of Cratiton, that's out toward Exeter, I think, outbreak at St. Mary's Clist, Failure of the Carews, force and discipline of the insurgents. They set forth their several articles or set of articles which are answered by the king and archbishop. Cranmer's severe answer to them. Carew's reception of his return from the West. Oh, this is going to be just gorgeous. Pag Paget remonstrates again with the protector of his weakness, the siege of Exeter. And my forebears were in Exeter during that. Rising in Berkshire and Oxfordshire. Irresistible advance of Gray in those parts. His terrible severities. Movements of Russell in the West. Battle at Carey's Windmill. Battle of Cliss. Slaughter of prisoners by, Russ, by Russell. Battle of Heath of Cliss. Relief of Exeter. Severities of Russell, execution of Parson Welsh, uh, risings in the East countries, agrarian nature, the Oak of Reformation, adventures of Dr. Parker, a licensed preacher, the Royal Herald appears at the Oak, the insurgents take Norwich, their singular moderation, the Marquis of Northampton advances on Norwich, he is totally defeated. Warwick's leniency, and then chapter 16, 1549. Opinions passed by learned strangers upon the English Reformation. Contrariety of their opinions on the great controverted points. Cranmer again attempts to unite England by a concord with foreign churches this time with the Swiss, 1549. He knows what the Swiss hold on the, in large part, including the communion. This is huge, this is huge. Low state of the universities, they're visited by royal commissioners. There was probably a design to suppress them. Alarm and precautions of the universities, promptitude of the commissioners. The visitation, Ridley on both commissions for Oxford and for Cambridge also. He was to be the advocate of the revolution, but he was dissatisfied and, and protested against the proceedings at Cambridge. 
attempted union there of Clare and Trinity Hall, Ridley remonstrates and yields. <coughs> Further proceedings in the case which finally come to nothing. Curious protestation of Redmond, master of Trinity College, outbreak of reforming violence at Oxford. Peter Martyr, okay, thank you, opens the visitation there with a sermon. Proceedings of the visitors, destruction of the college grammar schools, zeal of Cox, the chancellor of the university. He will um, go over to Frankfurt and have his run in with Knox. Peter Martyr at Vermigli at Oxford. His lectures had caused great commotion before the visitation. The nature of the presence, never in question in England since Wycliffe till now, among the learned. Character and career of Dr. Richard Smith, contest between Smith and Martyr. Martyr refuses to use the scholastic terms, hard treatment and flight of Smith. Disputation between Martyr and Tresham, Ched C. Morgan before the visitors, both sides claimed victory. The literary monuments, memorials of the contest and their curious history. Booser and Thaggius at Cambridge. Booser not so advanced as Martyr. Disputation at Cambridge before the visitors. Ridley's conduct as moderator fall of the scholastic philosophy in England, profanities, playhouses shut, lest the new learning should be ridiculed there, progress of pillage, building of the former Somerset House, narrow escape of Westminster Abbey, other examples of sacrilege, sales and exchanges of the monastic lands about this time, Pole writes to Warwick and Somerset, he sounds a very alarming note. Somerset answers him. The notion moved at Rome of sending Pole to England as a legate. Bonner under suspicion. He allows customary prep masses to be celebrated under the name of communion. He gets some monitory letters from the council. He's ordered to preach a prescribed sermon at Paul's and meantime confined to his house. His tasser eternity of character. He preaches his sermon and is formally denounced by Hooper and William Latimer. A commission sits on him at Lambeth, Cranmer and Bonner. Sitting of the House of Commission, Bonner and Smith. He's finally deprived and sent back to prison. Troubles of Lady Mary for her mass. She's required to conform to the new prayer book. She plainly tells the council her opinion of them. She is again, again required to conform. And I hate to end it here, but I have to because I have a grandson who wants to read J.C. Ryle's The Five English Reformers. He wants to read it audibly to me. So I have to take a quick leave because we have to do that for 30 minutes and then evening prayer at 7. So grandson calls. Got to leave it early. So this is going to be a great book, by the way. So Godspeed.